Hello and welcome to a Galactic Ruler uh, tutorial series. I'm actually going to be playing through the tutorials and uh, introducing you to how it all works. What I'm going to be doing mo mainly though is kind of going through the pitfalls that you might run into, giving some additional context to what's going on in the tutorials. So I won't be reading through the text and kind of stepping through piece by piece. What I will be doing is proceeding through the tutorials and then giving details about what you're actually interacting with, why you need to worry about it, what things you don't need to worry about, and again, what kind of pitfalls you might run into as you're going through the tutorials. As always, music is by Carl Casey at White Bat Audio. If you have not ever watched me playing Galactic Ruler before, just be aware that the reason I'm using this music is because the music that you have in the game is uh, not safe for YouTube. It is already, uh, the copyright is held in, and is uh, exercised by the uh, people who hold the rights. And the shareable music that you could toggle on doesn't always stay on. So it, it's better to just kind of, if you're playing the game and recording it, use your own music. Uh, so White Bat Audio is my go-to. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and do basics of gameplay in this episode here. We're gonna go ahead and launch. We're starting this tutorial as the Earthers. And here we are. Okay, so one thing I should mention up front is that in the tutorials, there are two sort of zones of attention. One is these blocks that come down here, and the other one is the help text, the pop-ups that come up over on this side. These help text pop-ups will be available in any game that you play of Galactic Ruler, not just the tutorials whereas these will only appear in the tutorial. So here we go. There it is. And this says how to use help. These little swirlies here come from the tutorial, no, sorry, come from the help text system, not from the tutorial. This is telling us that we have game speed locked right now. So we'll close that, hit okay. This is the speed area here right now. It is locked, so we can't make it go faster or slower. Moving around in the game is pretty easy. You can go up from here and then double click to get back into your system and then double click to go, oops, double click to go down to your planet and then click up to go back up and then right click to move around like this, right click and drag I should say, and then zoom in, zoom out with the scroll wheel. So let's go ahead and deploy our survey ship says our objectives are here. This is how we can find our objectives. This is what this guy is telling us and telling us now to deploy our spaceship. So we're gonna do that down here and we're gonna pick our reserve unit. I'm gonna pause real quick while I do this. Here are the reserve units and I wanna show you this little button here increases the panel size so you get a bit more space. So you have these four sections. There's selected units, deployed units, reserve units, and battle groups. Battle groups are basically like control selected groups that you can have a whole bunch of those and then refer to them again and, and move them around your map. Reserve units is anything that is not currently actively on the map. It's just kind of in reserve, like in a regular war game. Because again, Galactic Ruler is based on the Supreme Ruler uh, game uh, series. And it is a kind of a, an offshoot of that. And so it does a lot of war gaming stuff that you don't find a lot in other space-based 4X games. So there's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve in terms of just how the game works. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with the Supreme Ruler uh, gameplay style. So once we have a survey unit here, we can go ahead and deploy it. And we click there and that puts it into deploy and that is now a deployed unit, and it shows up here on the map. So we have deployed. Now we're gonna wait for the next question, next thing to come up here, the next step in the tutorial. Now we need to deploy an FTL beacon. And the way FTL beacons work, well, the way FTL works in this game is that there are some ships that can go between systems, not all of them can. And the ones that can, when they arrive at another system, say if you're going from here to here, they will arrive at a random location in that solar system. So for example, if I were popping into here, I could arrive anywhere 
in this system generally are going to be on the outer areas, outer ring. However, if I place a beacon down somewhere in here, then any time one of my faction arrives, it will arrive at the beacon. So what we want to do for this particular step in the tutorial is take our ship and establish uh, an FTL arrival point. Now the way you select in this game, there's a number of things you can do, of course. You can click, drag, select, which will select anything that's in that bounding box, and it puts them in the selected units list. You can also find a hex that you're on and click and then click again, and that will select a unit. You can also go to your deployed units and add them to your selection list, and that's there. Now, we don't have more than one at the moment, so let me, uh, well, actually, I don't want to mess up the tutorial. I was going to uh, deploy some reserves, but I'm not going to do that right now. But if you uh, select here and you get a bunch of these in your selected list, and we'll see this later on, I'll be able to show the, show the example later, you can actually create a sub-selection of these units. So you don't only have to have these selected units that you operate on, you can uh, sub-select, and I will get to that once we have more units available on the map. So let's go ahead and add to selected. Now it automatically selects them and you don't have to go over here, but I tend to do that just so I know which ones I've picked up. All right, so now I have this and you can see that little purple line, which is my move pointer, essentially, my move vector. Let's go ahead and deploy an FTL beacon. Now there's a couple of ways that you can do this. As you can see here on the left hand side, there is this unit orders panel that pops up. If I don't have anything selected, it's gone. If I then select one or more units, this will pop up. Sometimes in the current version of the game, 1078, this doesn't pop up. Uh, they're working on getting that fixed, but if that doesn't pop up, there is another way to deploy orders. And that is by control right clicking somewhere on the map. You can control right click and then you get a list of options that more or less matches what you have here. But we're gonna do it using the order panel. We're gonna go and select, click deploy beacon, and then we right click where we want it to go. Now normally, uh, from what I've understood from the rules, you kind of want it to be closer to the star uh, because it will kind of improve the efficiency of the FTL beacon and jumping to and from. But I am not gonna do that because that's gonna take too long. So I'm just gonna have it do it right here. And so now, if I unpause, my little guy, there he goes, he's heading over. And as you can see, these bright yellow ones, currently these are in reserve, but it doesn't matter. Bright yellow means it does not have a current order. Dimmed yellow, or whatever that gray yellow color might be, means that it has an order it is currently executing. So if I go here, I can of course see FTL, I can move this ship from one uh, system to another, I can survey, deploy a beacon, move, set up a waypoint, patrol, repair, and so on. A bunch of other options here. Return to base, put it back into reserve, and so on. And then you can click there and then click on this to select a map destination or just right click over there. There's a few other things that you can do, like clear orders, you can uh, formation move. So if you have a whole bunch selected and you do a formation move, then uh, if you set that, it'll toggle it so that always it does a formation move. They will move kind of in unison in the same pattern that they're selected in. This here allows you to add them to a battle group and this turns on their automation on or off, which uh, I, we will get to, but it overrides the status here of whether or not your space initiative, space unit initiative, uh, which is an automation system, essentially is none, low, medium, high, or full. We, we will get to that. It's not critical to know that just now, but like I said, I wanted to provide some context. The other thing you'll be able to do, which we will get to later on in the tutorial, is give it individual rules of engagement, which lets you uh, specify how it's to react to certain circumstances, and you can also automate from here. And you can turn on or off governor control. Right now it's on, which means that if it has an order that can that it can repeat, it will tend to repeat that order like surveying, uh, and then it will move on to another system in this particular case because it is a surveyor, and it will kind of do its own thing. If you turn off governor control by putting the lock on it like that, then it will not automate, automatically do the next thing it wants to do. It will stop when it's done with the sequence of events that you've given it to do. Like if you tell it to survey, and you turn governor control off, it will survey the entire system and then stop. It will not move on to another system to try to survey that one. 
but we are not there yet. So here we go, and that's advanced orders, yeah. So that's, that's all of that. We're gonna let it do its thing. These little green circles are just basically, because this is a survey ship, it's telling you, I could do a job here. I could survey the, these spots, but we're not gonna worry about that. Oh. We didn't want it to do that, actually. Let's, let's turn that off. Uh, I, this is a, one of the pitfalls of the tutorial, because it is going to ask, ask us to research. I think it's in this tutorial. It could be the next one. Uh, but when you're going to do that, you kind of want to turn the governor control of the research off so that it doesn't do it for you, and then kind of end up not letting you make that decision yourself in, in the tutorial. So this little lock here on the research tab makes it so that the governor won't try to do anything on its own. So we're just gonna do that for right now, but I'll talk more about that once we get to that point. Here we go. Maybe I'll make it go a little bit closer. Let's do it right over here. Control right click and deploy beacon. There, now it's just gonna do it over there instead because it's gonna take too long to get over that way. There's my little guy. Oh, and something that would be uh, maybe interesting to you, uh, if you come out here to options and go to graphics, you can change the unit model size. I have it set to, well, there, but you can make it super big if you want, so now it's huge, or you can make it super tiny. So now it's tiny. I kind of, I think it defaults to being in the middle here, but I like to have it like maybe a quarter of the way, uh, just because that way they're, when you're out here, they, they are reasonably sized in a way that makes sense. So there we go. We have deployed a beacon, and you can see now it pops up there as a beacon. And then, one thing you'll note is that now this little button here is, is bright, and if you click on it, it will send you to the beacon in the system that you're in. And then this helper is telling you, hey, location and faction. So what that also means is that if I'm kind of over here, and I click on this little faction blazon, it'll take me back to my home world. And then if I click it again, it'll take me onto my home world. Also, very nice. And that will be, that'll be the case anywhere I am. So if I'm out here and I go, boink, it sends me to the planet, or to the system. Boink, sends me to the planet itself here. And then boink, one more time, it sends me down to the ground. So that is highly, highly useful. Okay, so we have established the arrival point. Now we just gotta wait for the next request to come up. Homeworld defenses, begin construction of a defense platform. All right, so this is interesting. Go. It's going to tell us how to build facilities, but I will show you how to do that. There's a couple of ways to build facilities. The way that they will teach you in the tutorial is by going here to the Defense Department, coming down to Available, or sorry, no, coming down to Facilities, <laughs> not Available, that's for other kinds of things, and select from this list and do a Defense Platform, and then click here to Build Facilities, and then left-click where you want it. Facilities in space can only be put around uh, in orbit around a planet or, you know, a body. Uh, well, it's basically a planet. Uh, these are little asteroids that you can't um, build anything around. They're used for mining, which uh, we may or may not get to in the tutorials. I don't remember. Uh, the alternative you can do is you can click this button here, which will build a facility at a governor's suggested location, which in this case, because it is lit up, means that there is a governor's suggested location. Uh, sometimes there isn't one because they're all full up and you kind of can't do it that way. Notice that when I select one, whatever type I select, it gives me this little purple circle around here. That means this is a spot that I could place something. Oops. If I uh, do not have that, I believe if I... Yeah, there we go. If I'm in another panel, it does this. Shows no purple circle, which means that I am not, you know, trying to place anything there. But if I go like this, Come down here, that means yes, I can place something there. The other way to do it, which is the way that I tend to do it and which I imagine is the way most people will do it and probably you will too, is you can get a context menu by right clicking anywhere, anywhere on the map, anywhere, anywhere on the map. If you right click on the planet itself, sometimes you'll get a few more options you can see here. But if I right click, I have a build option and then I can pick what I wanna build, defense platform and then I click where I want to do it. So you don't have to click on the spot where you're building. You can do it from anywhere. It's just that when you right click on a planet, usually it will give you some more information like what are the facilities that are already there, for example. 
whereas this one obviously doesn't have that. It'll also give you some additional information when you right click, it'll give you more details about that uh, object in that hex. So we're gonna go ahead and build defense platform and then left click, done. Now, I wanna show you what this means. So if you left click here, you'll get the little uh, uh, indicator of an alert of what just happened and I can clear that over there. They also show up on the right hand side here. You can clear these by hitting these little check marks or you can click this button, which clears all of the messages. If I come over here to the recon department and I've clicked on my planet, if I click somewhere else, nothing shows up. You can see that there is one central piece and then six external uh, blocks, little squares. That is the case on every hex anywhere in the game. You can see here, there's a central piece and six squares around it. And the central piece is always gonna be some major complex or it will be a planet. So if I'm selected here, this is showing me I've got the planet and I have an orbital station. I have a shipyard that's already been built. And then I have a shipyard that I am building, which that little hazard sign is telling me I am building. If I click here, I can do certain things to it. I can, uh, well, it's under construction, so I can't turn it on or off. I can cancel, I can build more of it, I can pause construction, or I can rename it. Okay, and now this tooltip here is telling us about resources. So we're gonna go into that just a smidge here. This, uh, our, this is your resource list here. This is agriculture, which is food, ore, which is used to produce uh, finished goods, energy, which is used to produce finished goods and do research and is needed for the population, same as uh, food. And then finished goods, which are used to construct facilities and units and provide uh, ammunition and the like. You can also see those down here in the resource tab in the lower left, agriculture, or energy and finished goods. In its current setup, the game or the governor of your faction controls how these things are handled in terms of supply and demand. You can double click to lock them so that only you can do stuff with them. Same with, as I said, the research over here, you can lock that. And then with building units, you can lock these by, right, well, it's currently locked. This is now means that the governor can do stuff and then that turns it off. If I'm down on the planet, you'll see I can do land, uh, air, and sea, and I can turn those on or off as well in terms of auto building. All right, so let's continue. Interstellar travel, let's visit the neighboring system. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take our survey ship going to add it to selected. There we go. There he is. And now we're going to FTL. Now you can FTL from here or the easier way is you just pop yourself up and then right click to pick a destination. Alternatively, if you don't have anything selected like I don't right now, nothing is selected. If I come up here, anything that can do FTL is available on the map. So if I have other things that are deployed that cannot do FTL, they won't show up here if I drag select, but I can do the survey ship because that's one of the things it can do. So let's go up to Kokuria here, right click. And now it's going to move over there in just a minute. There, he's getting ready to go. And I have done it. Or, well, it will in a moment. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Don't make me look bad. There he goes. Boom! He zoomed out. Yay! Okay. So now if I... Oh, well, I gotta let him go for a second there. If I pause and come out here, I now find him in Kokuria. And now that he's been there, I can actually look at what's in the system. A bunch of planets. Ooh, there's a pirate over here. Ooh, he just landed right there. Oh, I guess he 
Ah, he didn't land on the outside. He landed on the inside of the system. Well, that's lucky. Well, not because that means he's right there next to a pirate. Uh, so, oh, well, there we go. All right, now this is telling us about the reports. So you can go through this at your leisure, but I will show you briefly what these are. I'm gonna pause and just kind of do this. This is the map. This here is unit presence, uh, showing what units are in the area here. If I go there like this, there we go. My FPL beacon is listed. Facilities, these are all my facilities that are on this uh, zone of the map. If I come down into my planet, my facility list will be very different. You can see here, these are like hundreds of hundreds of things on my home world. But if I'm back up in space, it's just gonna be these, and it's gonna show one of them is building, that, that defense platform I made, a station, orbital shipyard, and so on. And then this is a filter you can use to filter different aspects of what you wanna look at. Next over is diplomacy. It shows your allied, uh, allied factions, colony factions, enemies, discovered factions and known factions we've discovered the titans but we don't know them yet i don't know exactly what the difference is but there you go so the titans those are the pirates you know they're pirates because of the skull and crossbones i do recommend that if you're playing this game uh for the first time turn off pirates when you start because pirates make the early game very difficult and it forces you to pay attention to a lot of things at once and it can get a little daunting and a little bit overwhelming for new players. And it certainly did for me. I do recommend doing a few hours of playthrough without pirates and then maybe start over with the pirates turned on once you feel like you've got a uh, handle of things. Um, but all right, so next up here is resources and you can look at the supply chain for all of your goods. So for example, energy. 594K is coming from production to the stock. 2 million are going from stock to the population. And 5 million are going from general electrical output to finished goods directly. Ore, 140K from production to stock. 249 from ore to finished goods. Finished goods, 249 coming from ore to make finished goods and from electricity to make finished goods. Then 432,000 from production to stock. So it's produced from finished goods to stock. 183 are coming from stock to the population and 648 units are going from stock to the military. So you can kind of keep track of your supply chain that way. You can also look at what the, what the military is demanding, what civilians are demanding. And that will be finished goods and energy. Same with these guys over here. This gives you production and consumption of all of the factions that you know about. And this will give you imports and exports of all the factions that you know about. So you can, again, filter by the good type. And then over here, finally, which is also accessible via the A key for the hotkey, and that is the Galactic uh, Atlas, which gives you the list of all of the factions that you know about, provocation level, whether or not there is a cause for war, how many allies they have, how many enemies they have, how many units they've killed and how many of their units have died, what their domestic approval level is, what their military approval is, and then what their population is. And then over here is what their build capacities, land, air, and naval are. And also when you're hovering over, you have access to things like negotiation, centering on the faction, declaring war. And when you hover over yours, you can also center on the faction. So that is uh, useful to get an overview of things. And then finally, over here, we have these filters, which are used to filter hotspot locations so you can see things on the map. Mostly useful uh, when you are on the planet surface down here. For example, I'm gonna turn all of these off here. So for example, you can kind of highlight the coastlines, highlight the population centers, agriculture hotspots, metal, energy, high ground, close combat or low visibility, garrisons, the battle zones, which are uh, a way to control military conflicts without having to be granular. You can kind of uh, do it at a more meta level so that the the uh, your governor will know which zones it should be fighting in and so on. Um, and that is something that is worth uh, checking out in the manual. The uh, tutorials don't cover it. It's a bit more of a complex system. 
Uh, I haven't used it yet, but I imagine it's probably about as useful as it is in Supreme Ruler, which is to say it's, it's a fairly important uh, element of the gameplay. And then finally, nav points that you can set. Then filters over here. Oh, sorry. Uh, filters, yeah, over here. Allies, map grid, line of sight, units, unit HUDs, and so on. You can set up nav points. So for example, if I right click here and go toggle nav point, and then I look at my nav points. Where is it? Oh, oh they're over here, sorry. Uh, uh, right. There we go. Nav points. If I double click, it'll take me to that spot, or I can just get rid of that nav point. I can come over here, set a nav point over here, set another nav point, and then now they're listed in here, and I can kind of move between them and delete them as I choose. Done. All right. Let's go forward. Now we need to find an exploitable world. Okay, so this is going to be colonization, effectively. Let's go back home. We have a survey drone. Survey drones cannot travel between uh, between systems. So if I come up here, you'll see it's not selectable out here, whereas my survey ship is. And you can see some different features of these guys by double clicking on whoop, oopsie daisy, double clicking on them. And you'll see what its stats are. It is spacecraft, it is a drone, it is a planetary surveyor. This stellar icon is a bit misleading. In the way the way the game describes the two types of ships, it's planetary versus stellar. A planetary ship can only move within the same system, and a stellar ship can go between systems. So this is misleading. Ignore this little in bit of information here. I think this essentially, uh, there might be a bug. I don't really know why this is here, because we already know it's a spacecraft and not a land craft, and it's not really stellar by the terminology of the game. It is planetary in that sense. It's a survey drone. It does not move between systems. But there's other things you can see here. It's a drone, right? And it's a planetary surveyor. And it has these various stats. One thing you should be aware of, the most critical thing in the early game when you're learning how to play is this right here. That is the energy level. When a ship moves away from its sources of energy, it starts to utilize that energy once it gets out of supply. And this area here, this zone, is the only zone of supply that I have right now. You can actually toggle that on or off. Supply levels. I have supply here, so as long as this ship stays around in this area, it will be constantly supplied. As soon as it leaves, that number will start to drop. And if it hits zero, ship won't move anymore and won't do anything and it'll die well if it's if it's a ship under attack it will just straight up die or be captured actually now there is a way to avoid this problem even if you don't have supply like if this guy is going ah, da, 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 da. oh no i've run out of power i have no energy left i am stuck there is a particular a ship type called a planetary transport or a stellar transport again depending on uh what kind of uh drive it has. Planetary transports can carry supply. If they come to a zone that has supply, they'll just load up on supply as long as they don't have, and not, as long as they're not full up on other things like troops and whatever. And then if you send them off to hang out in the hex of or hex adjacent to a ship that needs to get supplied, it will unload its supply into that ship, re-energize it, and then it can go on its way. So if you end up in a tutorial situation, which does happen a fair amount, I've seen it happen, I did it a couple times and other people I've watched, it happened to them too. If one of your ships runs out of supply while you're trying to figure out how to do things in the tutorial, if you can access a planetary transport, just pick it up, move it to a supply area, let it load up its supply, move it along down to the ship that you're trying to get moving again and it'll everything will be fine. Okay, so we're gonna take this, this survey drone and we're gonna have him Go over here and survey Dalahiri. Uh, actually, no, I'm not going to have him do that. I want him to do something cooler if I can. 
Uh, I don't want him over there. You don't. You won't know why I'm doing this until a little bit later, but that's okay. I will explain it in just a second. Okay. Well, I maybe not. Uh, that, by the way, is a pirate. We know it's a pirate because it's you know it's got pirates in the game. I can I I know just from how the game works that this is a pirate, but at this point we're just treating it as a as a different faction, just a regular faction because we haven't surveyed over there. And you can see that this is their supply area. Okay. So here's what we want to know. What are the different world types? You can tell the different world types without even having to survey them. This is an Earth habitable. So Earthers can inhabit this because it looks like, you know, Earth. It's an Earthy type planet. And if I click here, I right click, click, you can see various features of it. Or if I am just out here, you can see it's got particular blazons on it that tell us some things. And if I hover and let it go, you can see medium planet oxygen breathable. If I come over here, this one, we don't know what it is yet, but I can tell you already right now that it's hostile because it's purple. It's not oxygen. Earthers can't just live there normally. You can still colonize it, but it'll always be an outpost. It won't be a full-fledged city kind of place. It won't, it won't be great. They won't like it, but they can do it. This, uh, oh, this probably is also another one of those. It just got rings. It's probably another one of those landable, but not really super habitable worlds. That is also going to be the same way. It's going to be like a moon type planet. This one here is a lava world. You will not be able to land on it, but it does provide a lot of metals and mineral and ore. So you can build ore extractors around it to, uh, to exploit the world. And sometimes they also provide a little bit of energy. And then there's another kind of planet, which this one is not, but usually they have rings. It's going to be bluish. And it's going to be a gas giant. And gas giants provide a lot of energy. You put energy collectors around it and it will gather energy for you. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take this guy and we're gonna put him, let's have him exploit. Uh, yes, we got a lava world. We got a regular world in this one over here. Mm, let's go. Yeah, let's have him take this. So we're gonna go here, control right click to survey or just use this button here. There he goes. Now he's going over to survey. And I'm doing it just because it's the nearest one. Now, one thing you should know about the way the orbits work is that each one of these has a primary planet and then some satellites. So primary planet, two moons. Primary planet, three major asteroids. Primary planet, one, two, three, four asteroids. Primary planet, two satellite moons. The way colonization works is if you colonize here, you can colonize in two layers. You colonize either in the space around by creating an orbital station, which will then allow you to control the space around. It gives you supply. So for example, it creates a little zone like this or an outpost or a city zone, uh, if you colonize it that way. But mainly you're gonna colonize first as an outpost. And outposts create a spaceport, uh, which can move goods back and forth between them and the, the main faction and so on. If you create an orbital station only, it cannot receive or send goods anywhere. You have to also build an orbital storage, which will take up one of these slots. So you'll have an orbital station and then you'll have an orbital storage. If you have an outpost, which is on the surface of the planet, it has its own built-in storage. You do not need to build an orbital storage out in space, but I do recommend building an orbital station because if you only have an outpost and you're only kind of colonizing the planet's surface, an enemy can come and take over the space above you and you won't be defending against them because you don't have an orbital station, you don't have defensive platforms and so on. And so they can take over the space above you and then you're screwed because now you're stuck on the planet's surface and you can't get up and out and you can't get, get land there and so on. So it's always a good idea if you're going to have an outpost on the surface of the planet to also put an orbital station and then some maybe some defensive platforms to uh, protect the area around the planet on, on the space layer. 
But if you do have an outpost, you do not need an orbital storage. If you do not have an outpost, you do need an orbital storage in order to be able to transport goods to and from that colony. I have been filibusting for a little while and our little guy is almost there. Come on, buddy. Come on. Check it out. Now, exploitable world doesn't necessarily mean that you can land there. It means that you can basically do something to it. So that could be landable, breathable, inhabitable, landable, nasty, or non-landable and it just provides resources at the space layer, like a lava world or a gas giant. All right, come on now. There we go. So now he's starting to investigate here. It's going to go 25, 50, 75, and then 100%. It's going to take a second. There we go. 25%. 50. Seventy-five. And he's done. Excellent. Now, I want to note that because he is not set up to automate, and I don't have Space Unit Initiative set anything above none, he'll just chill. He's not going to do anything on his own. If, however, I set him to automate and I don't turn this on, I don't have to turn this on, I should say. I can just do it this way. And then I turn off Governor Control, so theoretically, if he were an FTL-capable ship, which he's not, he wouldn't bounce around the system, uh, various systems. Well, I, so I don't need to turn that on or off because he's not available for that. But if I automate him, and then I have him control right-click to survey. Now, he will just continue to bop around the whole planet, the whole, the whole system, and do it on his own. So this one is not considered an exploitable world. Why? Uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe because there's nothing here? No, it does have metal ore and agriculture. Maybe it'll take him a minute. I don't know. We should survey a gas giant asteroid or some other non-landable world. Oh, he wants they want us to do that to deploy a non uh, to check a non-landable world. Okay, fine, fine. We're going to do that then. We're going to do that over here. I'm going to have him survey that. I thought he was just asking us to do whatever we want. But no, apparently not. Now, this appears to be a bug. <laughs> He should not still be surveying that thing over there. He's moving over to the other spot. I don't know why it's doing that. But we'll just pretend that's not happening. But if I want to, I can come down here now. And we can see this is the planet that he surveyed. It has no agriculture available. No spots where it can do agriculture. You can see that just because there's no red dots. Which is not surprising because this place looks super nasty. It's got a lot of metal and a smidge of energy. So this would be a metal-rich world that you could then exploit and add a whole lot of ore to your, uh, to your colony, which you could then transport around to other colonies or to your homeworld uh, parent faction or sell on to other places. All right, so while we're waiting on that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this guy and I'm gonna have him come back over here. Where did he pop? He popped in right here. There he is, right? Because I have my beacon there and I know he's gonna land there. Now I'm gonna have this guy survey this thing over here. This isn't necessarily what the tutorial is asking me to do, but I'm gonna do it anyway. All right, there we go. Now we get this unlocked. So now we can change the speed. All right, there we go. Now pause again. Controlling your empire. So it did check, uh, it, they did investigate an exploitable world according to the parameters that they wanted us to have, which is to say either a um, an asteroid or a non-landable thing. We didn't end up with a non-landable before, which is why that was an issue. Yeah, lava moons and gas giants can have an orbital station and support extractor facilities, but these facilities must first be researched 
Orbital stations are built by sending an engineering ship to that location, issuing a build order. All right. So now we want to control our empire. So uh, let's see, we're waiting for messages. This is just telling us about the messages, telling us about the filters and everything over here. Now we want to deploy two attack fighters. All right, so here we are in reserve units. They've provided us with two attack fighters. Okay, so add to selected, add to selected, selects like this. And now this is what I was gonna tell you about before. If I control click, it will deselect one while keeping the full selection list here. And then I can control click to reselect it. I can unselect all of them, select one, and so on. And then hit escape to remove them all from the selection list. It's very handy. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna deploy and deploy. Boom, we've deployed two attack fighters and now they are on my deployed list. Wow, I've got, I've got a lot of these guys. Chapter one is complete. Yay! Okay, I'm gonna play on for a minute uh, and uh, go through some uh, few minor little things here. So for example, I told you that you can select a bunch of different things. Boom, 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 boom. Now they are in my selection list. I can do a partial selection. And if I move them over here, those two guys will go. And as soon as you give it an order, it removes your selection list completely. So you would have to kind of redo it again later if you need to. And as you can see, this guy, this is my survey drone. I gave him the automate units uh, command, and so he's automating. This guy does not have automation turned on, and so he did that and just stopped. He was like, no, I'm done, thanks. So that automation button there is really handy, especially if you are not allowing all of your ships to do stuff on their own. And this comes in handy down the road where you can do, for example, this one says, all units engaged will fire back and resupply where they are positioned, and that's it. Low also says they will go for repair and perform some, perform some border recon and defensive prepositioning. Medium, they will also retreat, increase border recon, and so on. High, will uh, have them actively attack and defend and recapture lost territory. And then finally, full will actively reserve and deploy. Now, I have noticed that in the current version of the game, they will actively reserve and deploy on their own even if you're at low, so don't, don't rely on that information. Hopefully that will get fixed, but at the moment, they just kind of uh, reserve and deploy willy-nilly as they, as they see fit. Now, obviously you can override that, but if your governor is very zealous, they will tend to kind of do their own thing no matter what, unless you have it at none in which case they will do absolutely nothing. If I wanted this guy to help out with uh, surveying, but I wanted him to automate, I'd come over here, automate units, and then come over here and survey, and then he will survey and proceed on to the next. But because this guy is a survey ship that has FTL capability, I do want to turn governor control off which will, in the case of this particular type of ship, mean that he will not, after he's surveyed something, pop off to another planet, to another uh, star system, because I don't want him to do that. And that's just a little quirk of how these survey ships work. And uh, it took me a long time to notice that, and it did uh, save me some headaches. So just figured I'd let you know. Anyway, we are done with tutorial one. Uh, next one will be tutorial two, which we're starting to get a little bit more meat and potatoes of the game, and it's, uh, it's gonna be interesting. But for right now, uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.